Hey guys, it's Michael J. Welcome back to another video. I'm so excited for season two of the Doom Patrol we've got coming out. Season one was so good, and I just wanted to make a quick recap video going over everything big that happened and what you'll need to know going into season two. I know this video is a little late, but I just had so much fun watching the first season of the show, and I'm so excited for season two that I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and make this video anyways because I'm excited about it and I want to. If you haven't watched it yet, there will be spoilers in this video. I mean, it's a season one recap, so all the spoilers will be in here. But I'm going to be doing videos on season two soon so make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss anything and if you're new to the channel welcome i'll be here making fun videos for you guys every single week on all your favorite movies and tv shows so make sure you're subbed so you're here when we're talking about all your favorite shows the doom patrol is a show about a band of traumatized heroes each of which has suffered a horrible accident that has given them their abilities as well as left them scarred and broken the chief now as calder took them in under his wing to help them get back on their feet and offered them a safe space together they look into weird happenings and eventually team up with cyborg to find the chief who randomly goes missing along with the entire town. This show focuses on these super freaks and each of their characters internal struggles they're trying to overcome just as much as it focuses on them fighting the bad guys. The characters are all so different and have to figure out how to tolerate each other and work together and they don't hesitate to break the fourth wall in this show. While watching it, it reminded me a lot of Deadpool with the meta wall breaking and Rick and Morty with how crazy the storyline for each episode is and a lot of how I hope the upcoming Disney Plus show WandaVision will be with all the alternate realities and dimensions. And season two looks insane. You know what I'm talking about if you've seen the trailer, and we're going to be talking about that later, but for now, let's jump right into it because season two is waiting and I can't wait. The show starts by introducing all the characters and giving you what you need to know about them to kick things off. The chief has kind of a Charles Xavier school for the gifted going on at his manor, where he houses Rita Farr, an old film actress who had an accident that disfigured her body that she isn't in control of, and Larry Trainer, an ex-pilot who ran into some kind of cosmic energy outside the Earth's atmosphere that left his entire body burned and scarred, and now the energy is a spirit that lives in his body, using him as a host. And then we're introduced to the newcomer Cliff Steele, an old race car driver who had an accident where his brain was the only salvageable thing and the chief successfully put it in a robot and Cliff ended up staying at the house too. Crazy Jane is the next character we're introduced to and she might be one of the best. She's got 64 different personalities living inside of her, most of which have their own unique ability. She comes and goes as she pleases, she's a little more standoffish you could say, but the chief goes out of town one night and the team decides to take a trip into the town to see what life is like and after staying in the mansion for so many decades they needed it. But they completely end up destroying the town and everything that could go wrong does. The destruction in this show is so much fun and it sets a great tone for the rest of the series. The chief comes back and is pissed, says that the destruction let his enemies know his location and they're going to be coming after him. So they go into town to protect it and the villain shows up, Mr. Nobody, played by Alan Tudyk, such an amazing actor. And he did such a great job bringing this character to life, I really hope we get to see him in season 2. But Nobody, Eric Morden, is a walking shadow. He's got power over reality and can change it to what he wants. He can create alternate pocket universes and uses these different realities to torture people and make them go insane. He comes to town, takes the chief, and the entire town gets sucked into a hole in the ground. Jane jumps in to save Niles and then everything is gone. The next morning, Cyborg shows up and meets Cliff who is trying to catch this donkey that spit Jane out. Rita, Larry, and Cyborg figure out that the donkey is a keyhole to a different dimension and end up going into the donkey dimension to save the town. And real quick, just wanted to say a big thank you, the channel is about to hit 160k and I really want to keep going so we can hit our goal of 200k by the end of August. If you didn't know, only 8% of my viewers are subscribed. Guys, 8% is great, but could you even imagine 10% or 15%? We'd blow our goal out of the water. If you're not subbed yet, please consider subscribing, I really appreciate the support. And thank you so much to the 8%, you guys are the best. Oh, and real quick, good news, we're going to have our own Discord server for the channel soon. I'll be keeping you updated on it, but just a little something to look forward to. It's going to be our place to kind of chill, hang out, talk with each other about movies, shows, future videos, everything. I'm really looking forward to it. Now, like I was saying, the team needs to figure out the connection between the donkey and the chief's disappearance. They find a picture of the donkey in Paraguay that was taken in 1948. So they go looking for clues and they find a crazy old German scientist in his utopia who's upgrading people and giving them powers. They learn that chief shot the scientist 10 times and stole something from him, only to leave him barely stable with some tubes and a hand crank keeping him alive. So they kill him and all of his hive mind soldiers and Jane fireballs his lab and they head home. And this is the first time we see Animal Mineral Vegetable Man who ends up making little cameos throughout the rest of the show. So cool, I want him to return in season 2 as well. Okay, so episode 4, the team meets a chaos magician who gets them to help him stop a cult from destroying the earth. The team opens up a portal and takes the boy, Elliot, that their leader has been raising as a book that when at the right time they could read his tattoos and summon an eye that would destroy everything. So they hide Elliot and the 
magician sends Cliff and Jane to the church in Barcelona where it all started. The priest accidentally transports them to the cult's world, Nernheim, which isn't great. Nernheim sucks! They get captured by the cult and are being held by the leaders while Cyborg, the magician, Rita, and Larry fight off the cult assassins and protect Elliot. Unfortunately, they capture him and perform the ritual and a giant evil eye called the Decreator appears in the sky and literally starts Thanos snapping everybody away. Mr. Nobody and Chief actually have to stop for a moment and work together and go back in time to 1977 to grab a version of Jane and have her make her own cult that's the opposite of the other cult to combat what they're doing in present day. This cult creates another book on a dog that the team goes and finds where after the real Jane rings the bell in Nernheim, the book the new cult put on a dog can be read and they summon another eye called the Recreator. This counters the other eye by bringing everything back and then they have a staring contest. And then Mr. Nobody takes the chief back. And in this episode, we also learn that Jane is not the main personality of the body. It's a little girl named Kay Chalice that all the other personalities develop to protect her. And in the midst of all that, nobody told Jane to look for the Doom Patrol. Not knowing what that is, because technically they're not the Doom Patrol, or at least not yet, Jane takes Larry and Rita back to the 50s and finds the real Doom Patrol at a school for superheroes that Niles Calder created. Apparently, they fought Mr. Nobody and killed him, and then they all retired. But Rita tells the leader, Mento, that Mr. Nobody is still alive and well, and he took the chief. But once she tells him this, reality starts falling apart. Apparently, everything was just a part of Mento's altered reality. That part was really crazy. Crazy. Mr. Nobody had used their fears against them and beat them pretty badly when they fought. A big butt hot air balloon came down with a jukebox that made everyone go insane and turn the cops into pinatas, so all the crazy people turned on them and beat them up and ate all their candy. Really trippy. Niles put them in this fake school as a safe place after they lost to protect them from themselves as well as protect them from wreaking havoc on the world. Their physician tells Rita and Larry to keep looking and later Rita learns to accept herself and Cyborg's dad finally starts trusting him and comes and fixes him up. We also also learned that nobody got kicked out of the Brotherhood of Evil and that resulted in his girlfriend breaking up with him. Rita accepts that she doesn't want to be the actress Rita Farr anymore. Cyborg sets up a Facebook profile so Cliff can stalk his daughter he learned wasn't dead and that ends episode 6. Episode 7, the team realizes they're going to have to fight nobody so they decide to have a group therapy session to clear the air and tell their secrets from their past to help them accept themselves and communicate with the others. <laughs> Everyone shares but Jane. Cliff tries to get her to share, but it only drives her away. Then he has a breakdown and collapses because of a rat nobody recruited during episode one. Apparently, nobody went back in time and recruited a rat to sabotage Cliff in present day. Cliff ran over the rat's mom with a car, and Mr. Nobody had him live to get vengeance for his mom, so while Cliff was zoned out earlier, the rat crawled inside of him and started wreaking havoc. Apparently, it was the rat that suggested group therapy, or that's at least what Rita tells Cliff in 9. Cyborg goes on Tinder and gets rejected because of his robot abs, and Cliff goes to his daughter's house and busts a bunch of stuff up. This episode is basically all the characters having their own mental breakdowns. Next episode, the team receives a message from Niles asking for help with a location on a cake. We are introduced to Danny the Street, the Bureau of Normalcy, which investigates the unusual, tested on Larry back in the day, and is now after Danny the Street. Cyborg and Larry go into the town and learn that Danny is sentient and the people of Danny keep it alive. And we also learn that he can jump the whole street. Meanwhile, Cliff and Rita get a call from Karen to visit her boyfriend Doug's place. Karen is the worst of Jane's personalities and casts a love spell on Doug and his entire family and even Rita so they all go along with her in Doug's marriage. Cliff finally steps in and puts a stop to it because he's a robot and spells don't work on him like that, and he tries to take Jane away, but then Karen is pulled from the spotlight and Jane goes blank. Meanwhile, the Bureau finds Danny, then all the Danny Zens beat up the Bureau's leader, and once Danny learns nobody is behind Niles' kidnapping, it says it can't help them. It's too dangerous. It points Cyborg to a comic that says, I made a deal with Doom and the hero is missing, and then him and Larry are transported back to the manor. Thanks, Danny. They take Jane, still blank, back to the manor, then Larry's negative spirit sends Cliff inside Jane's head to help retrieve Jane. We get to see 18 other personalities and learn about Miranda, who is another primary like Jane. Cliff and a personality called Penny Farthing travel through the underground, Jane's mind, and Jane's memories all the way to the core where Jane confronts the bad memory of her father and stands up to him, freeing her from his grip, and then she returns to the spotlight. Episode 10, we relive Niles' memory from 1913, where he used to work for the Bureau of Oddities as an explorer and was searching for a monster in the woods with his buddy Alistair when they were both attacked. A primitive creature found Niles and nursed him back to health and showed him this great wolf, bear, moose monster that she called Oyewa. They ended up falling in love and his friend found him years later and told him that the Bureau had changed and basically that they were hunting the monster to kill it. 
Niles killed his friend and left the girl to return to the agency saying that there was nothing out there out of love for the girl. And meanwhile, this is taking place during the last episode where Cliff is in Jane's head trying to get her back and the Bureau sends the Beard Hunter to find Niles, who Cyborg and Rita find in the bathroom eating Niles' beard hair. By eating beard hair, he can track anyone, anywhere, at any time. He eats some of Cyborg's hair and then Cyborg's suit starts malfunctioning and the Beard Hunter gets away. He ends up tracking Niles to a tunnel or something where Oyewa attacks him. After Jane comes back, she takes Rita and Cliff to Florida for Cliff's daughter's stepdad's funeral where Cliff fails to build up the robot courage to speak to his daughter. Cyborg and Jane then go off to find the hero missing from the comic Danny gave them. Well, actually the hero Flex Mentalo's wife, Dolores. Cyborg is kidnapped by Dolores in the Bureau of Oddities and is taken to the ant farm where they used to experiment on Larry back in the day. Cliff retrieves the watch that he gave his daughter from the alligator that ate her stepfather and leaves it for her and then just walks away. The alligator search was one of my favorite parts though. I thought this was so funny. Cyborg's dad, Silas Stone, comes looking for his son and learns that he's been captured and taken to the ant farm. So the team goes in to rescue him Star Wars style. Seriously, no one saw Star Wars? and they're immediately caught by Darren Jones, the director of the Bureau, because he worked out a deal with Cyborg's dad. But really, they all got caught on purpose, and while escaping, they set free all the other oddities, including a horde of little butts that destroy everything in their path. The butts are loose! Cyborg learns that his dad put a failsafe trigger in him in case he ever went into a critical state that would allow his nanites inside of him to rebuild him with cybernetics in hopes of saving him. Cyborg lashed out in anger and after beating his father unconscious, nobody comes out and says he played right into his game and tells them all to stop looking for him and then vanishes. They find Flex Mentalo in a cell and then Jane teleports them all back to the manor, except for Rita, Cyborg, and his dad. Jane takes them to the hospital so Silas can get some help. Now, apparently Flex was at the ant farm back when they brought Larry in and their cells were next to each other and Flex could communicate with Larry's negative spirit. The Bureau threatened to kill Dolores if Flex refused to cooperate with them, so he created a mental block for who he was and now he doesn't know he's Flex. So Jane had to go find Dolores and bring her back to Flex and then their memories were reignited right before Dolores was Thanos snapped away. In the next episode, I think we're on 14, we learn nobody got fired from the Brotherhood of Evil and his wife dumped him and told him he'd always be a nobody and that's what started his journey of being Mr. Nobody. The team goes to Danny the Street and it tells them Niles is in the white space. White space is the area where there is no story. There's no context. It's the space on the page between the panels. Flex sends them all into the white space after flexing the wrong muscle, which was golden, and then in this space, Mr. Nobody creates individual realities or facades where the team has to relive each of their incidents with the choice of them avoiding it and living on their normal lives like nothing ever happened. They all beat the test and meet up in the white space and seem to kill Mr. Nobody, then return home, but it turns out they are actually living in a reality nobody created while in the white space where Niles has to watch them die over and over again every day. Cyborg learns what happened to his actual mom that they both survive the explosion, but only one could live and his dad chose him, and then he comes to the white space to save his friends, where nobody forces Miles to tell them the truth that everything that happened to each of them was not an accident, but Niles' own doing. We see a flashback to 1941 where it's revealed Niles was planning on exposing Larry to the space matter and knocking him from the sky to eventually get him for testing for Project Immortus. Then it cuts to present day, six months after their meeting with nobody in the white space, where Larry and Rita are trying to start living a normal life again. Jane started taking a drug from the caretaker of the original Doom Patrol that Niles made back in the day to quiet metahuman's powers. We learn Cyborg's dad knew what Miles did, and the difference between them is that Niles did it for an experiment, and Silas did it out of love for his son. Nobody gets the rat that was in Cliff, as well as the cockroach Ezekiel to team up and go after Niles' old girlfriend in the forest. They capture Danny the street and learn that Niles had a daughter that is a danger to all of them. Apparently, the reason Niles orchestrated the accidents to the team was to study them so he could learn the secret to immortality because all he ever wanted was to live just a day longer than his daughter, Dorothy Spinner, so he could protect her and so he could protect others, the world, and that's why he created Project Immortus. Danny the Street was taking care of her and Mr. Nobody found out and trapped them all in a painting, including Danny. Flex managed to get all the Danny's ends to safety and then the team goes into the painting. When Nobody found Niles' girlfriend, she turned the rat and the cockroach ginormous so now they're living out their own Godzilla movie. They stop listening to Nobody and destroy the town, then everyone gets eaten by the cockroach so they're protected from radiation, while Negative Spirit rips a hole in the dimension and they all escape the painting except for Nobody and the Beard Hunter. So this sets us up for season two. Jane managed to rescue the chief's daughter, Dorothy, from Danny before they left, and she's going to have like godlike powers, so she'll be the main focus of the new season. First, they're 
they're going to need to figure out how to get big again, then they need to figure out how to prevent Dorothy from destroying the Earth on accident. She has the power to create crazy animal monsters, she can manifest and create just about anything she wants. So while she's going to be the little girl they're trying to protect, she's also going to be the main threat of the whole season. Niles knows that her powers are too much and that she could destroy the whole world, and this is why he needs to live long enough to make sure she's safe as well as the world is safe from her. And like I said, right after I finished making this video, I started watching season two, and I'll have another video out on the first few episodes soon, but let me know what you think of this show. I'm having such a good time going over everything again for season two. It's been a long time since I've found a show that I've liked as much as this. Comment down below what you think of the show and if you're watching season two. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was a little bit longer, but I appreciate you sticking around. I can't wait to have a Discord soon to talk with all you guys and meet everyone. Go watch one of these other videos, and until next time, I will see you in the comments. Peace.